Welcome to the short demonstration on creating a highly available file server using DoubleTake GeoCluster. This video shows how to create a simple two node cluster at a single site. The first step in the process is to install the file server role on each node in the cluster. This is done using the add roles wizard. Select file services, click next. Make sure file service selected, click next and then install. This needs to be repeated on each node in the cluster. I'm going to use failover cluster manager to create a geocluster replicated disk to use for the file share. To do this, I create an empty service or application, add a resource, geocluster replicated disk. I'm going to quickly configure the properties for the geocluster replicated disk call it the H drive. I'm going to select the mirror properties and specify send data only if source is due and target, which is good for file servers. Choose my H drive as a disk to replicate and the network to replicate over. Finally, bring the disk online. The H drive is now available as a cluster resource. To return the H drive to the pool of available storage, I'm simply going to remove from the new service or application and then delete that service. I can now use the configure service or application wizard to create my file server. I'll select file server, select next. Um, I'm going to give my file server an IP address that is available on my network. And I'm going to specify a file server name to use. In this case, I'm going to use demo for GFS. I can now select a GeoCluster replicated disk to use for my file server. So I'm going to choose the H drive, uh, hit next to continue, and wait for the wizard to complete. My file server cluster is now complete. I just need to wait for the services to start and the file server to come online. We can see the file server is now online. In order to make it useful for users to access, I need to create a share that will also be a cluster resource. I'll use the add shared folder wizard, specify a location on the H drive, create a new folder, which I'm just going to call files, select OK, continue the wizard. I'm not going to modify any NTFS permissions at this stage. Uh, specify a share name. I'm going to keep the default, of, which is files. I could specify share permissions. I'm just going to allow the administrators full control at this stage. And finally complete the wizard. I can verify functionality of the file server using Explorer. Let's do backslash backslash demo for GFS. And I can see my files share. I can right click and create a new file. I'll just quickly edit the file and change some content. I can use fail of a cluster manager to move the file server from one node in the cluster to the second node in the cluster. That process takes just a matter of seconds. Again, I can verify that the file server is still working. See the file is still there and the uh, content I changed previously is still listed. The next thing I want to do is simulate a genuine failure of a node in the cluster. I'm going to do this by powering it off. Before I do that, I'm going to copy a lot more content to the file server. So in the double take folder on every server which has double take installed, there's a documents folder. I'm going to copy all of the double take documents to the file server and then simulate a failure.
It's very useful to know the location of the double take documentation if that's the only thing you learn from this video. Okay, the files are nearly on the file server. I'm going to bring up the Hyper-V console for the node that is currently running the uh, file server cluster, the active node, and I'm now going to just power it off. You can now see that the virtual machine SQL node 2 is actually turned off. Uh, fail of a cluster manager, we can see that the file server is offline, but it has immediately started to come back online on the second node in the cluster, which is actually SQL node 1. It literally takes just seconds to come back online and again I can access that file server. I can browse the file share and I can see that all the files I'd previously copied up are in the right place. Final step is to turn back on the SQL node 2 and re-establish the GeoCluster replicated disk. Here we are waiting for the server to boot up and the double take service to start. Once the service has started, the connection will be established and we will have a re-mirror of the data to ensure consistency. In the next video, I'll extend the cluster by introducing a node located at a remote site. Please visit us at www.bcap.com.au.